We got Tori Heham in Illinois is a former JW um, dealing with some bad stuff. So welcome, Tori. How can we help? Hi, Matt. How are you? <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Tori. Okay, good. Yeah, so what I wanted to call about was I was a Jehovah's Witness for about 38 years and um, started doing my own research, which is banned from doing when you're a Jehovah's Witness. You're not allowed to do outside research. But I started to, and of course I went down the road um, of, of seeing the truth about the truth, as they call it. And um, I don't know how much you know about Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm assuming a lot, but they call themselves the truth. And anyway, I went down um, the road doing my research, and I ended up uh, getting disfellowshipped, which means I was excommunicated from everybody and everything I knew. Um, I was what they call a ministerial servant. Um, I had privileges. I was speaking. I was traveling and, and, and giving talks, and I had a lot of... Uh, I, I had a lot of sway. Uh, my family was kind of big in, in the uh, Jehovah's Witness organization. And, and just like that, I, I was ostracized. I, la I lost it all. And, um, you know, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, they tell you that all these bad things will happen to you when you leave. And I don't believe in God at all anymore, but it, they were right. You know, everything they said did happen. I, I got divorced. I lost my kids for a little while. I had to file bankruptcy. Pretty much anything you could think bad happened to you did. And, you know, my my logical brain says that that's all coincidental, but sometimes late at night when you're laying there alone, you start to wonder, you know, they, they were absolutely correct. So I just didn't know if you had any advice on that and how to how to deal with that. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of us have experienced similar things to that, Tori. First of all, I'm sorry about that. Second of all, I'm glad you exited that and, and woke up to the truth, the real truth of those things being lies. But the problem is when they tell you that if you leave, bad things will happen to you. And then by shunning you and cutting you off from everything you knew, they in fact make those bad things happen. So that's a that's not a coincidence that it happens. And it's not some judgment from God because you left. They're the ones that made these things happen to you, not God or any other force beyond what you can see. And I had similar experiences. I ended up getting divorced after my deconversion. I lost contact with my with several of my kids, and that went on for years. I lost most of my friends and community. I know it can be traumatic and very, very disorienting to wake up from that kind of thing after such a long journey. And I, I too, was, was in evangelicalism for three and a half decades. I, too, was a minister and very much involved in the leadership aspect of that. So I can totally relate to what you're saying and what you've gone through, Tori, and I'm really sorry that it's been such a buttload of trouble for you. But I, you didn't say how long you've been out, and maybe you can share it with us. But I will tell you this, it gets better. It has gotten better for me. I reclaimed my life. I found my footing. I found my voice. I found who became who I really was and wanted to be. And I began to write my own story. And I would never, I wouldn't trade that for anything that I lost because that's the, uh, that's the true sense of who I am. That's my authentic self. And um, there's, there's no price you can put on that. Yeah, I, I have left, a couple I questions. Years to, old. I'm 41 now. I have a couple questions, and these are going to seem, yeah, these are going to seem potentially silly. Uh, some of the things that happened to you, uh, I think, are definitely happened because you left the church, but not because there's a God, but because there are consequences to decisions. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that your wife was Jehovah's Witness. Yes, sir. And and your uh, disfellowship was was a significant trigger that led to divorce. Correct. Now, of all the bad things that happened to you, have those bad things also happened to people who didn't leave the church? Absolutely. And uh, the bad things that happened to you, do they also happen to people who are atheists who's never been a part of the Jehovah's Witness Church? Yes, definitely do. Cool. So is there anything, I just want to make sure we're talking about it the same way, 
is there anything in you that thinks that you're actually being punished by a God or uh, just recognizing that bad things happened? No, I think I've gotten pretty much past um, that. I never sit here and think that Jehovah's real, not one time. But I think what the most frustrating part of it for me is that my family is sitting somewhere and they know all this because of the rumor mill, I'm sure of it. They know all the stuff that's happened to me, but they're sitting there going, see, this is why you don't leave. This is what happens when you leave the organization. And that's so frustrating because my situation is almost making their faith even stronger. Well, you can't control how other people view your circumstances and your situation. And like Matt said, I know of plenty of Christians who never left the faith and bad things happened to them. They died in horrible accidents and uh, sicknesses and and uh, lost kids and uh, divorced and lost jobs. All those things happen because we're human and life happens. It's random and chaotic. And so if they're sitting there thinking, well, this is what happened to Tori because he left the faith, that's on them. There's nothing you can do about that. And I've I'm sure I have family members who look at my diagnosis with a terminal illness and say, well, that's because Dave left Christianity. None of them would say it to my face because I've ripped their face off. But I know they say it behind the the scenes because it's gotten back to me. You can't worry about what other people are thinking. It'll drive you crazy. You live your life, find your authentic self, live your best life, write your story, And don't lose a lot of sleep worrying about what other people are thinking about your situation. That will lead to a lot of torment. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys' words, that's for sure. And I tell you what, I've been listening to you guys ever since I left. So the atheist experience and Lloyd Evans, John Cedars, you guys have, uh, you've been my personal therapist, that's for sure. And if I get anything out of this call, I want everybody to know that the Jehovah's Witnesses are indeed a dangerous cult. They're not just friendly people knocking on your door. There's a lot more behind the scenes than people don't that people don't realize. And I just would like people to to know that. Yeah, I tell you what, I, have you got in your area, uh, Tori? Have you got a secular community? Have you tried reaching out to Recovering from Religion or the Psychotherapy Project and any of those things? Because I understand it, it can be incredibly difficult. One of the things that some organizations, particularly Jehovah's Witnesses, are good about is that, uh, and Mormons and others, is that when somebody leaves, you don't just lose your church. Like, I still have my parents. It, that could fall apart any day. I mean, we could reach a point where we don't want to speak to each other at all, uh, but not because the church is is intervening. The, there's not a Southern Baptist church that's, well, there, there probably is somewhere, but, but they, they're they not going to a Baptist church that's going to say, you never should never talk to your kid again. Instead, they're, they're going to ones that say, you should never talk to your son again about religion, which is probably wise if they want to stay. Uh, mm-hmm. Christian. So I just want to make sure that you, you are looking at or have found community uh, in your area so that you have support beyond just, you know, reaching out and calling us. Yeah, so thankfully, um, after I left, a couple other people have left. Uh, one or two elders left. And honestly, last Christmas, we all went to one of the former elders' house, and we got to sit around and have like a little powwow about it. That felt really good. And so we kind of, whenever we can, we try to get together. So that's helping a lot. That's good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And thanks so much for calling, Tori. And we'll keep doing our best to uh, let people know the things that you found out about I was witness church and others, but, um, yeah, um, I hope Tori, Tori. things improve for you. Mm-hmm. I have been through a lot of absolutely awful things myself, uh, just during my time as an atheist and, uh, no matter how bad it gets, I'm still constantly impressed by the capacity for other human beings to, uh, show compassion and care, even in the face of religions that are trying to claim uh a foundation in in caring when they clearly don't uh religions a lot most most religious people's view of love um as when we're talking about like fundamentalist type religions it is foreign to me i don't recognize it i don't recognize this um this abuse that they want to label love where it's like, Oh, we're going to withhold caring for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
because you agree. Now, granted, my love is also conditional. I think everybody's love is conditional. It's, it's, I, I think you can love someone who, who hates you and treats you terribly. I think that's possible, but I don't think it's, uh, particularly healthy. And I don't think it's say, the type of love we're talking about, but, and, and I have people who've been my friends who, you know, we're just, we, we can't agree on stuff, but I, I don't, I like, I've watched kids get kicked out of their homes um, as teenagers because they, they don't continue to share their parents religious beliefs. And, and that I just, Oh, absolutely. I don't understand. I mean, I can understand a divorce. I can understand, you know, grown up saying, okay, you don't believe like me. I don't want to hang out with you. I can't understand disowning kids. Yeah. One of the main reasons I left was because my daughter was going to have to get a blood transfusion. And I knew in the back of my mind that I was going to get her that blood transfusion, no matter what the Jehovah's witnesses did to me, I was not going to lose my, my daughter. And I don't know if you guys realize Jehovah's Witnesses do not allow blood transfusions. I would have been disfellowshipped, which I got disfellowshipped mm -hmm. anyway, but I knew I, I didn't care. I was going to do it. She ended up not having to get one, but I was going to do it. At least the option is around there now. Uh, it's, it's really weird to me the, the types of anti-science positions or th that can arise from doctrines from in otherwise well-meaning people. I mean, I'm sure nobody wants your daughter. Nobody in your church wanted your daughter to 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 be ill or die, um, but they're still willing to deny her, you know, reasonable medical treatment. That is, I mean, is it, blood transfusion is not even controversial anymore. Mm -mm. On that yeah, note, they, Tori, they're, they're completely lost. <laughs> thanks well, so much, and you, stay strong, sir. Yeah, uh, let us know if uh, right. if, if, if something so much, changes. Sir. But yeah.